Science is being used to improve your life every single day, but it's also being used to make awesome toys and improve things that have been the same for hundreds of years. Today we're going to look at how science is improving the way that we use globes themselves. Did you know that the biggest thing in the world is the world? We love globes. There is no way to accurately make a map that is flat. Because, spoiler, the Earth is not flat. It looks like this, except for much, much bigger. So because of that, we've been collecting globes for our entire lives, and we have a couple of really cool ones we want to show you today, and we're gonna tell you all about the science inside of them. But before we get into all these, we are Destructive Creativity. My name is Jonathan Allers. And I'm Eliana. We exist for you, for science, and for fun. So if any of those things appeal to you, make sure you subscribe, subscribe because <laughs> we have new stuff coming out every single week. <laughs> Globes really haven't changed much in the past couple hundred years because they might get more accurate, but in the end, you have a ball with drawings on them and you spin it. You see? Whee, it spins. Thankfully, science to the rescue, we can make things better! Or at least more expensive. <laughs> we have the MOVA globe here. And the MOVA globe is amazing because it will rotate in the presence of light. You could even be holding it and it'll just continue to rotate. There's no power, there's no batteries. Super cool, we'll explain exactly how that works. We also have a levitating moon lamp, and as you can see, it's not touching anything, and it's super, super cool. We're going to start with the MOVA globe. Now, this MOVA globe is utterly amazing, and these are not cheap. I think this one cost about around $500, so they're a significant investment, but if you like maps and globes, they're awesome. Click on the link below if you want to learn more. So the MOVA globe has photoreceptors in it that power a tiny motor that turns the globe inside of a, a clear acrylic sphere. So this, as long as there's the presence of light anywhere, this will actually keep spinning, even if you're holding it. It's amazing in being able to hold a globe and watch it turn. So cool. So how does it work? Well, it works similar to the way a compass works. So if you think about a compass, the needle is magnetized and it will point towards the poles of the Earth using the magnetic field of the Earth to align itself. There is a massive compass inside of this globe. So that massive magnet, it's pretty much a bar magnet with a north and a south pole. And that magnet will lock itself to the Earth's magnetic field. And that pole that it's attached to has a motor running around it. And that is what's spinning this globe inside the clear acrylic shield. It gets its power needed from several photoelectric cells all the way around the inside of this globe so that in the presence of light, it's providing enough power for that motor to rotate around the compass that's locked to the magnetic fields of the Earth. It's so cool! It is cool. It is cool. It is cool. <laughs> so yay science, we made a globe expensive. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why the photoreceptor cells can power this thing so well is because it's actually floating in a very low friction environment. That's right. There's actually a layer of really low friction lamp oil or mineral oil in between the outer acrylic shell and the globe that you see. So it's actually floating kind of like the atmosphere of the Earth. We also have a replica of the moon. Over here is the Sea of Tranquility, and that is basically all we know about the moon. Yeah, I'm not really familiar with the geography of the moon, but that got me thinking, it's not geography of the moon, because geo is Earth. Is it the lunarography of the moon? Is it the... The geology of the Earth, the lunarography of the moon. We don't know. If you know the word we're looking for, let us know down in the comments because I actually want to know this. This is really cool. Okay, so now we'll just move this away and we'll move this back here. Okay, so we have a moon. So this is something that 
it doesn't have to be a moon, but this is just what we have around. So this could also be a globe, if you wish. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys have been watching for a while, you'll remember that I made an episode on electromagnetic levitation. Essentially, uh, should we show them first or after? Let's show you the lamp first, then I'll explain how it works. Okay, so why don't you set it up on its base? As you can see, it is actually floating without anything touching it, and it's receiving some sort of wireless power as well. We're going to do an episode on wireless power transmission later, but for now, we're just going to focus on the electromagnetic levitation. Now, originally, I was actually going to take this lamp and I was going to rip it apart to show you what's inside, but then I remembered I have exactly this, except for I've already broken it and taken it apart so that we can see what's inside. <laughs> so, hey, there we go. Anyways, so what is going on inside of this lamp? Well, inside the lamp, we have a magnet just a natural neodymium magnet. So it's very strong, and you can probably see it if you turn it up to the camera. There's a dark spot on the bottom of the moon. I don't think there actually is a dark spot on the bottom of the moon. <laughs> this is just because there's a magnet. They didn't actually make that lunarography correct. <laughs> Anyways, that magnet is suspended above this base, and inside that base there are two components. There is an outer ring of a natural magnet that is pushing, that is repelling the magnet inside of the moon. And that means that it's just going to be a north on north pole or a south on south pole. And that's what this magnet is here. So this is the magnet inside of the moon, this is the ring inside of this ring, and then there will be electromagnets on the inside. And that's where this gets really cool, because those electromagnets are going to be pulling this magnet down towards those electromagnets, while the outer ring is pushing it away. I just realized I said that backwards. It's the outer ring that is pulling the magnet down, and the inside electromagnets that are repelling it. So, if there was no power, the electromagnets aren't producing a magnetic field. Which means that as we bring this magnet down, it just gets clipped to the side of the giant electromagnet. However, once we turn it on, so we have power now, there's a current of electricity going through each of these rings, which is creating an electromagnetic field. And as long as that magnetic field is equally opposing this magnet, we can just simply set it down and have it levitate because it's being both attracted to the outside ring and repelled by the inner electromagnets. It's so cool! We get to play with the coolest of toys. It's awesome. <laughs> so there you have it. Using science to make globes even cooler. One using a low friction environment and infinite rotation, and the other electromagnetic levitation. This has been really cool. I think this was a shorter episode than usual, but still, we just wanted to show you guys a couple of the awesome globes. Yeah. This is Destructive Creativity. If you like it, make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Bye!